We enter the complex from the east through a front courtyard enclosed by an arcade and several joined outer buildings. Part of what makes the monastery interesting is its composition out of different buildings which, over a large span of time, nonetheless come together as a coherent architectural whole. In attempting to model that whole, however, it became clear that this unity is not achieved in the details. Almost no horizontal surfaces have the same elevation. The surfaces of the battered walls rarely meet along proper edges, instead intersecting awkwardly. The columns of the main hall differ in height and detail, and their beams are of different sizes. We've just entered the Korlom. It's a relatively simple space, quite high and narrow. What makes it one of the most interesting areas of the monastery is that its monumental wall is covered over two stories in a vast set of murals. This passageway forms a kind of open square or C-shape, wrapping from the south all the way around to the north where it rejoins the main hall. Taking a tour of the ground floor chapels we begin in the south. Each chapel has a slightly different structure inside, with the exception of the twins which are identical. You can see this one has a main beam and then two perpendicular beams leading off it. The twin chapels have the oldest of the wooden structures. They're quite nice. You can see that the columns just below the capitals are joined by smaller beams, which give the thing stability. You can see here the triple doorway of the northern chapel. Next we'll tour the upper level. and begin looking down the main hall we just left. The terrace is dominated by the pagoda roofs set upon the upper level chapels. The style of roof is actually Chinese and bears little resemblance to the rest of the monastery. You can see that those interior columns are slender. It's because the majority of the weight of each roof is carried on the nested brackets along the perimeter walls. You can see them in blue there. These brackets support beams that run in parallel and they transfer the load of the roof from that relatively large surface to the narrow surface of the perimeter walls. They also have great stability. Modeling these roofs was very interesting because they function like modern architectural systems. They're symmetrical and they function coherently as holes with stable formal and structural boundaries. Each roof sits atop a perimeter wall, built seemingly in another century, and then it has an independent logic. From a bird's eye view, the usual advantage for looking at digital models, Shalu Monastery has a distinct architectural form and it has a rational layout of its main spaces. I can only assume that experiencing the real building would be much more disorienting. In this last chapel, you can get a sense of how a unique combination of older and newer structures can create quite wonderful spaces. That window looks out through the front porch, and this space looks down into a much, much older chapel below.